Coming up on Varsity Sports, high school sports are back in full swing, and we're going to get you caught up on all the early season action, including a few heavyweight matchups on the gridiron. Plus, we give you a preview of the volleyball season. Yes, it includes my power rankings, and we'll hear from some of the best teams in the Dakotas. And it's time to renew my friendly, or mostly friendly, rivalry with Jason as we make our picks for the best and biggest games of the week. All that and more coming up right now on Varsity Sports. Hello and welcome to Varsity Sports alongside Jason Andera. As always, I am Jay Elson. Well, thanks for joining us to take another trip through another high school sports season. We're expanding our coverage this year, Jason. Not just going to be football in the fall anymore. We're going to add some volleyball into the mix. That's right. Volleyball will bring bring you some power rankings, highlights, a little bit of analysis throughout the season. Make sure to watch for that. It's the fastest growing sport in high school sports in the nation. And we're on board this year for some volleyball. Nice little statistic there. All right. Well, we've got to. Get, we're going to get to that volleyball in a bit. But we're going to start off tonight, uh, as always, with a look back at some of the best action in football. And we begin. <laughs> In North Dakota, the top two teams in Jandy's preseason power rankings met in West Fargo on Friday. Well, might not made it interesting. West Fargo closed in and controlled the game late. It was Chase Tykins' big night of 158 yards and four touchdowns that propelled the Packers to a 1-0 start. We ran a draw and Chase ran it like 75 or 80 yards for touchdown. He broke two tackles. He set a guy up. He broke another tackle and he outran everyone. And He's a wonderful player, and, and I'm glad he's, he, he wears a green and white jersey. The defending champs picked up right where they left off. An impressive debut for junior quarterback Jacob Olson, who went 11 for 18, 248 yards, and four touchdowns to lead the Patriots to a 43-14 win over Grand Forks Red River. Good stuff. Well, before there was a play run from scrimmage, there were already two touchdowns on the board, but it was the Demons who ended up controlling the game. Lucas Butts ran a pair of touchdowns in to lead Bismarck to a 32-13 win over Fargo Davies. And senior quarterback Jack Pfeiffer hit the century mark both in rushing yards and passing yards, and he accounted for three touchdowns on the ground, while his teammate Xander Lukowski also had multiple scores. The Bruins start the season on the right foot with a 36-0 shutout over Mandan. A couple of other scores of note, St. Mary's has a fierce rivalry with Shanley, but now have won six straight against their foes with an 18-7 road victory in the opener. And Bismarck Legacy gets yeah. their first varsity win in school history, beating Cheyenne by a count of 19 to 7. All right, well, it's time now to hand out our North Dakota game ball for week one. Chase Tyken, Jason, had a banner day. He did, yeah. The senior is a two-way player, ran 19 times for 158 yards, a lot of those after contact, hit Pater four times. Great way to start the season. Got to give some credit to those guys up front. We know they've got a big offensive line, but Tyken did a lot of his work in the open field by himself. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some of the other big performers from week one. Jack Pfeiffer of Fargo South ran for 104 and three touchdowns while throwing for 111 yards. Kanan Fagerland of Shiloh Christian almost went for 200 on the ground. And Brad Brady Wieg of Mott Regent uh, on only just nine carries. Yeah. 272 yards. He also scored four touchdowns. You see a lot of those big numbers in early season, and it gives us a little taste of who to watch for as we get deeper and deeper into the football season. All right, it's time now to head south. Class 11 AA had several great matchups, and we've got the recap coming up right after this. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Mitchell Technical Institute and Farmers Union Insurance Agency. And welcome back. Well, the first week of action in South Dakota pitted some great matchups between some contenders. One of those was a rematch of last year's 11 AAA semifinal between Washington and Brandon Valley. Every score in this game, Jason, changed the lead, and it was the defending champs who scored last. Sophomore Tupac Capella went for 119 yards on the ground and two touchdowns to lead the Young Warriors, while Thurl Reisdorfer scored the other two touchdowns for the Warriors. Alex Waltner was 17 to 29 for 193 yards and two touchdowns for the Lynx, but they just ran out of time in this one. All right, well, Roosevelt started out their season on the wrong foot. They threw an interception with their first play from scrimmage. That led to an Aberdeen touchdown, but they regrouped and shut out the Golden Eagles after that with a big defensive game, and uh, they get the 27-7 win. Well, it's good to win anytime, you know. In the first game of the season, we were certainly uh, – Played like it the first half. I didn't think we played very well, but 
Aberdeen had something to do with that. Old Gorman had their first game in 33 years without Steve Keeter serving as head coach. They played great defense and scratched out enough points for a 19-0 win at Rapid City Central or over Rapid City Central. Uh, quarterback Hunter Thompson ran for 105 yards, threw for 132, and a touchdown in his debut as the signal caller for the Knights. Lincoln also got a win over a Rapid City school, a 40-20 win over Stevens. The Patriots used three different quarterbacks in the game. Their starter, Preston Eisenbron, suffered a game-ending injury. They replaced him with Tegan Salava and then finished off the game with Cole DeBerg, who counted for two touchdowns in the game. Corey Victor, he also ran for 149 yards and two scores to lead the way. Mitchell hosted Harrisburg for the first annual Colonel Bowl. And Mitchell got out to a 10-0 lead in this game, but the Tigers responded in a big way with a dominating second half. Hunter Headley threw for 197 yards and two touchdowns to Justice Clayton to cement a 27-10 road victory. All right, it was Watertown visiting Pierre, and they got great balance. Bubba Spearing, 148 yards on the ground. Alex Gower threw for 120 in the air, and that notches the first win of the year for the Arrows, a 20-7 win over Pierre. Our expectations are for the kids to just keep getting better every single time they step on the field and improve throughout the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and we, we did that pretty well. We got some things to get better at, though. Yankton looked like they were going to run away from the Bobcats early in this one after building a 21-7 lead at the half. But Brookings scored three straight touchdowns to get back into the contest before the Bucks took the lead for good. 29-22 on this Krejci 24-yard touchdown reception from Nate Stevenson with under six minutes to go in the game. Brookings' last drive ended in a Brennan Carlson TD, but... When the conversion failed, Yankton able to hold on for a 29-28 win. Another classic between these two. Give Brookings credit, and they got some more momentum going, and they decided their quarterback eluded us quite a bit and made some plays. Uh, but at the end, we found uh, enough gumption to come back and put eight points on the board when we needed. After Brookings took the lead, our guys responded pretty well. We were able to score and get down and, and score again, so it's two. Two bulls going at it at the same time, and uh, we're fortunate to come out on top. In Class 11A, Madison showed why they're the favorite to repeat with a dominant performance in Dell Rapids. Mason Layton found three different ways to score, an 85-yard kick return, an 85-yard punt return, and he also hauled in a receiving touchdown from Josh Giles to secure a 35-6 win over the Quarriers. All right, game ball time now, and this was actually a Kind of a tough decision, but Mason Layton, Jason, was flat out unbelievable. Three catches, 76 yards, and a touchdown uh, to go along with that kickoff return for touchdown and the punt return for touchdown. And he made a pick on defense as well. Jeez. So every time the kid touched the ball, it was going the other way. Uh, just an electric performance to start the year off for Madison. Here's a look now at some of the other unbelievable performances from Friday or Saturday night. Chase Corton uh, goes for six touchdowns and 288 yards on the ground uh, in their opener against Miller. Yeah, a few more 200-plus rushers. Caden Wolf out of Baltic, Darian Ugunjimalusi out of Wolsey Wessington, and Dalton Kinsley of Phillip. He also got in the end zone six different times. Unbelievable. That's why it was a difficult decision. It seemed pretty straightforward that Leighton was the no, guy, but no, uh, I think so Chase Corton was right on his heels out of bottom. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to hear from some of the top coaches in high school volleyball as they give us an overview of the young season. And later on in the show, we'll set you up for the President's Bowl, make our picks for the best games of the week. Stay with us. Time to take a look now at the volleyball season. We're going to start in North Dakota, where Century had one of the most dominant seasons ever with a 41-2 and <laughs> record, while Shanley went 31-5 and on their way to a runner-up finish at State. Uh, this season, however, seems to be a little bit more yeah. wide open, not only in the West, but across the state. Let's look now at some of the other contenders, like Fargo Davies, who are coming off a 32-5 and season and a third-place finish at last year's state tournament. I would say the expectations remain the same. I mean, I don't think I ever come into a season and say, "Hey, we're gonna be, we're gonna be 15 and five this season, or we're gonna be 20 and 0 like we were last season." I mean, there's never something that I'm gonna put this um, out there. I mean, the expectation, you know, that we talk to the girls is, you're gonna work hard, you're gonna communicate, and you're gonna be a, a team player. And those are the things that I think you need to have every season in order to be successful. Being as I've been on this team since freshman year, um, I've definitely had more time to. Um, learn how to be a leader and so that's definitely gonna be one of my roles this year. 
I think our defense and our ball control is really good. Um, I think the offense is going to take a while just because we're coming off of a new setter and she's a younger setter. But I think everything else will be on point. Okay, let's look at your power rankings after one week of action in North Dakota High School Volleyball. Well, the cool thing is you've got the East-West Classic right off the bat, so you get a ton of matches in early in the season. They played three set matches to get things going, and you get to see almost everybody in the state. And so a lot of records early on century. They've got a tight group of seniors. They do have Reagan Dennis back. Lost one early, but a 7-1 start shows that they are the favorites in the state. Shanley, on the other hand, lost a couple already, but I still think they're one of the top teams in the state with Emily Dietz and uh, Kylie Canwitcher, both big, big presences on the front line. And then West Fargo Cheyenne, maybe the surprise team early on. Coach Leah Newton has really brought this team together and a young varsity career for most of these players. But I think they're a contender this year. They showed what they could do on Tuesday night with a big win over Shanley. And then number four, Kara Hausler, has a young group of demons, but they showed well at the East-West Classic and belong in the top five. And then Davies right now at number five. You heard from them earlier that they need to work on a few things, but they've got some senior leaders on this team. Yeah, they've lost three early, but watch for Legacy, watch for Fargo North, West Fargo. It's a wide open top five. I have a feeling we're going to rotate a lot of teams through here as the season goes on. Battles a lot less what happens now than it does oh, yeah. in a couple of months, That's right? That's why it's great got... to get the East West exactly. right off the bat. All right, well, in South Dakota, the Aberdeen Golden Eagles are coming off a championship in Class AA. They graduated their player of the year in Brianna Kusler. Uh, a couple of new serious title c- contenders have emerged. The likes of Harrisburg and Roosevelt figure to be in the mix. This year we have a a really unique group of seniors. uh, Seniors that have been kind of playing together since they were young. They show great great leadership skills. We have some girls that haven't seen the the court this season or the varsity court at all. So it's kind of exciting. We have our uh, libero, our libro. She's 14 and she's playing out of her mind. She's playing at a level that I can't explain right now, which is fantastic. we have a girl, our, our setter, Ab- Abby Heverly, has never sat on the varsity court for before or even JV last year. So what she's doing as far as in practice and running our system for our offense has been really exciting as well. Uh, last year we, we knew we'd, we'd be pretty good. We just didn't realize we would sweep through the season. We kind of ran out of gas um, come the state tournament. So this year they're a year older, a year more mature, both physically and emotionally. And they're driven and focused. They've got one goal in mind that's getting us back to Brookings. Expectations have always been kind of high for us, even coming into last year. And I think this year, just we have more to prove again. You know, we are super determined. We come into practice and we work very hard, like every second of practice, because we want to get to the state championship and we want to win, of course. But I guess that's everyone's goal. Well, we're only a week in, Jason, but it looks like Harrisburg could be really good. Yeah, they almost look like a college team to start the season, and that's why they're number one to get things started. Sammy Slaughter headlines this Harrisburg team that has a dominant front line and improved uh, serve return team this year and a ton of setters to uh, help this team out. So watch out for Harrisburg. They're going to be all over the the, uh, court this fall. Sioux Falls Roosevelt off to a good start. We didn't know what to expect from them. They've got a big front line. Uh, Riley Boyd and Michaela aren't both going to be adding a lot of kills and blocks up front, but the talented freshman Tatum Coima, just a freshman libero defensive specialist, has been awesome to start this year. So they look like they can maybe take that step up along with her. Hurons look great so far. Two sweeps and only one loss, and that was to Harrisburg, and they hung with Harrisburg in that game. Had they got a few more serves to go over, they could have maybe maybe, maybe pulled off an upset against the Tigers. So watch out for the other Tigers this year. And then Brandon Valley, they just got done playing here, and they look like two even teams on the court. Brandon Valley, a runner-up at state last year. I think they'll be in the mix this year for sure. And then Rapid City Stevens, maybe the most surprising start, getting a nice early season win against the defending champions in Aberdeen Central. So they're another team to watch for. But again, this top five is going to rotate throughout the year. So a lot of different teams to watch. Aberdeen Central is definitely one of them with Peyton Burkhardt and a couple other specialists, uh, Carly Gardner and, of course, Haley Mork all return to try to defend that championship. All right, well, it's going to be uh, an exciting uh, season. I look forward to covering it a little bit yeah. more in depth. Uh, so, again, look forward to each and every week here on Varsity Sports this fall. All right, well, the annual President's Bowl right around the corner. We're getting excited for that. Some great matchups between Sioux Falls schools coming up this weekend, and we're going to preview that when we come back. 
And welcome back again to Varsity Sports. Jason Andera, Jay Elson. Well, Sioux Falls football has become increasingly dominant over the past decade. We all know that if you're paying attention. Uh, Saturday, though, the President's Bowl is going to show off Sioux Falls' finest teams. All four teams won their opener last week. And this week, some natural rivalries are the showcase. Roosevelt Rough Riders take on the O'Gorman Knights at 3.30. And then it's Lincoln and Washington in the nightcap coming up at 7 o'clock. And we had a chance to talk to those coaches at the President's Bowl media luncheon today about their Saturday matchup. You know, we're watching a lot of pure film and, and not as much O'Gorman film as we, this week to get prepared just to see how we can maybe try to guess how they're going to play us. So our, our question for our kids is, you know, are they going to be able to step up and, and be able to make that, that tackle man for man out in space? And on offense, you know, are we going to be able to match up with their athleticism on their defensive line where, you know, they're not just big, but they're big and athletic. And, you know, can we, can we contain those sort of factors in our favor to keep us in this ballgame in the fourth quarter? You're going to see a pretty talented team, but they're young, uh, and so they're going to make some mistakes. You know, we're going to try to limit those. Um, defensively, we're going to be led, you know, by a good group of uh, seniors and juniors, and uh, um, they're learning to get to play with each other yet. Still, it's only game two yet coming up, and so you know, we have a really good group of kids. You're going to see them playing hard. Many times, what I find is, is uh, you know, if someone you know gets injured for for a game, and another guy steps in, does a great job. The other guy may not get his job back, you know, and his role is going to change. So everybody has their role on a team. And, um, you know, I, w with many of them, it's, it's that I got to step in and, and do a job when uh, you know, someone goes down. Jandy, coming in, what are the biggest storylines of well, these games? First of all, we've got both of these teams, Roosevelt and Washington, with their last loss against the teams that they're playing against mm -hmm. on Saturday. Of course, last year, Roosevelt against O'Gorman in the semifinals, and Washington's last loss was to Lincoln. And Chad Statham has never beaten Aaron Beaver since he's taken over at Washington, Crazy. so those are big. But the big stories for each team, O'Gorman, the new coach, obviously, a whole new system. We sure. saw it last week, a few mistakes made on the field. Couldn't really get into a rhythm, but you can tell everybody's learning at the same time. I see that offense improving. We'll see how much they can improve against Roosevelt. For Roosevelt, Slow start on offense last week. They thought that was the side of the ball that was going to take control this year. It was the defense that stepped up and held uh, Aberdeen to less than 150 total yards in that game. So in the game number two, Lincoln, the quarterback situation, again, you feel terrible. Preston yeah. Eisenbraun uh, is not probably going to go, and uh, he's got to have probably Cole DeBerg and Tegan Salava maybe sharing time for Lincoln in this game. So that's going to be a huge storyline for them. And for Washington, We've got a sophomore backfield, a ton of juniors making plays. We'll see if this evolution of the young players keeps going on an upward arc or if they're on a roller coaster throughout the season. So far, the first game of the year was great. They uh, they played wonderfully against a really good Brandon Valley team. Well, I'm, uh, I, for one, certainly look forward to these games each and every year because you get a good gauge of, of where all the Sioux Falls schools are at, yeah. uh, not to mention the fact that they just happen to be the best teams in the state kind of year in and year out. So it's, Always in the it's high quality football, to be sure. All right, well, we're going to have these games on Midco SN coming up next week. Check MidcoSN.com for other air times or to order a DVD copy of those football games. All right, well, when we come back, we go head-to-head, -head. our picks for the biggest games of Week 2. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Mitchell Technical Institute and Farmers Union Insurance Agency. And welcome back to Varsity Sports. We wrap things up tonight with a renewal of our personal rivalry. It's Pick'em. It's no longer, though, just pigskin Pick'em. We're going to pick three football games this year, and we're going to pick one volleyball game each and every week. The equalizer, of course, that upset pick yes. of the week, as it always is. But the difference there is it can be either football or volleyball. Get an extra point. Got to beat the defending one. champ here. Right, yeah. So good luck to you, sort of. All right, let's get going with volleyball tonight. And a good matchup in AA as Brandon Valley and Huron. We thought this was going to be one versus two until Brandon Valley lost to Huron. The lost to a very good Huron team, and it was a very even match, even though they lost in three sets. Both these teams played just on Tuesday night. I think they'll be ready to turn this thing around Thursday night, but Harrisburg will be more ready. I like Harrisburg as well. As you said, they almost look like a college team at this point. Uh, they're just really, really rolling, playing some good volleyball, and I don't see a way that they lose this game. Uh, game two, uh, it's football from South Dakota, Yankton at Mitchell. 
Two teams that had great first halves in their first game and the second half didn't go quite as well. They'll both work on those weaknesses. I, I like the home team in this one. I think Mitchell will figure out how to incorporate Spencer Negebauer a little more than they did last week. A lot of people were liking Mitchell coming into this season. You heard from a lot of coaches. They thought Mitchell was the team to beat in this class, but uh, I'm going to go Yankton in this yeah. one. Arlen Lichtis is just kind of like a out. wizard, uh, and he throws in some different wrinkles that are hard to prepare for, but I, I like Yankton to get the win on the road. In North Dakota, West Fargo at Century should be a great one. Well, no, not many teams can match up with West Fargo's line. They blow people off the line on both sides of the ball. Chase Tyken has been unbelievable. And their junior quarterback, Andy Gravdahl. I'll tell you what, this kid stepped up and made some plays. I think West Fargo is going to be tough to beat for anybody, but two great new junior quarterbacks. Watch Jacob Olson and Andy Gravdahl on this one, but I'm, I'm going with the Packers. I like West Fargo a lot in this game. Uh, not, not necessarily a blowout or anything but uh, from that standpoint, but uh, just with what they did to mine out last week, that's a good football team yeah. that they handled pretty well. Uh, give me West Fargo as well. Finally, Fargo South at Bismarck on Saturday. The Saturday game, I I love what Fargo South brings back, but I was I was thoroughly impressed with what Bismarck did against Fargo Davies. I like Lucas Butts and the rest of the Demons. I think they win because they're at home. I'm going to go Fargo South in this one. It's it's unbelievable to me to be picking against both Bismarck teams in the same week, yeah. but I'm going to do it. I'm going to put myself out there. Uh, I like the Bruins to go on the road and get the win and just kind of uh, show that they're really back and ready to go and ready to contend again this year. All right, finally, quickly, upset picks. I'm going to take a middle-of-the-pack team to beat the defending champs. Yes, Milner North Sergeant. Last week, their quarterback, Jacob Hansen, threw for almost 300 yards. Nobody's picking him to do anything. I believe in the Bulldogs. Well, you're picking them to do something. Let's do it. You're picking them to beat Park River for Bill Lincoln. Win. But uh, I'm going to take my upset out of South Dakota. And Dakota Valley really impressed me with what they were able yeah. to do against West Central last week. They've got a bigger test this week when they go on the road to take on Madison, a team that looks almost invincible. But I think the Panthers get yeah. it done. I kind of really like them right going now. On so I'm, I'm going to stick uh, stick for that one. So uh, a, kind of a reach, maybe a little bit of a reach for both of us this week in the upset. We'll see uh, if we can pull it off. All right, that's our time for this week. For Jason Dandera, I'm Jay Elson. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here next week.